Welcome, everyone, this brand new edition of Five Round MMA. My name is Alex Ramirez. Alongside me is my co host, Albert Sita. Thank you all for tuning in this week, whether it be on audio format, on Apple Podcasts, Podomatic, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you are liking, subscribing, turn on notifications to our YouTube channel. And of course, please leave a comment and a star rating on our Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to us or watch us. Give us a rating, please. And a comment. We will respond back. Thank you so much. Uh, this week's show is brought to you by Foxhound Fuel. Go to foxhoundfuel.com. Train hard, stay sharp. Get one of one of three or all three of their great formulas, a ready pre-workout, a hydration during workout formula, and a recovery post-workout powder that helps you get pumped, stay pumped, or recover for your next pump. Foxhoundfuel.com, three great flavors, three great formulas. Foxhoundfuel.com, use promo code 5MMA for 25% off your order. And a big thank you to Wild Bar. Eat instinctively. Go to wildbar.co. Get yourself all natural ingredients, for energy and recovery, nutrition dense bars. They're natural, paleo, vegan friendly, no refined sugars, non GMO, gluten free, made with ingredients you could pronounce and actually understand. Like, oh, I know what that is. I'm putting that in my body so I can recover, eat healthy energy. They got three great flavors pineapple, cherry, and blueberry. Wildbar.co. Use promo code 5 round MMA 15 That's F-I-V-E round MMA 15 for 15% off your order. That lets us know that we sent you there. Albert, how's it going? You're on your Foxhound Fuel journey still? Bro, I am destroying these workouts. Uh, I kid you not. I think uh, last week uh, I peaked pretty freaking good. And I'm hoping. Oh, you peaked early. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, uh, I stay committed because in two weeks I feel like I'm gonna be uh, pitcher ready and I can showcase uh, some uh, so, some of the improvements I've done before and after uh, photo. Yeah, a little before and after photo. Um, I do have a before I even started photo, and I'm not gonna lie, bro. I was pretty fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost embarrassing to see that picture because like i was like oh let me uh it's literally like maybe two weeks before we even started like uh doing the podcast and i i mean i barely did anything <laughs> dude i was why didn't you tell me so first of all i'm mad at you for not, <laughs> for not putting telling me you. out there bro. Well, i mean how'd you let me get that big i, don't, I mean i uh, i thought it was the pandemic maybe uh, i don't know we, we all put bro. we all put on some weight yeah so maybe. hopefully in a couple weeks i can give you a before and after but i'm telling you right now i'm killing it in my workouts and like i said uh i know they sponsor us but even if they didn't like this re the recovery is what i needed you know i always i always had a pre-workout um, I'm not a big hydration. I'm, you know, you, just drink, I, you thought you just drink water, yeah, right? Just drink before. water. I was fine, but it, it it didn't even occur to me that I needed something for recovery. And then luckily we got sponsored by Foxhound. I've been using the recovery, and bro, I'm just been killing it in workouts because yeah, pre workout gets me uh to the gym, gets me to do my workouts. But in reality, the real battle is the afterwards because, do my body's killing me. I got kids that I got to keep up with. You're not sure if you want to continue the next day, it, right? Yeah, exactly. I was like, dude, I don't even want to go that hard because, you know, I got to take Kylo to so-and-so place. That's my son's things, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, uh, awesome product. Love it. Yeah, I, I've been doing. I've been using Foxhound Fuel too. I've been going on these longer runs now, longer distant runs. And when I come back, I, I want to do a little bit of a weight workout afterwards. And I'm telling you, like, it's hot now. It's summer. Like after the workouts, I am I, even just after running. I'm like, okay, do I want to lift weights? The hydration gets me recovering from the long run to where I could do a little bit of a, uh, a weight workout. And then post, I am dying. But the recovery workout for me, the the formula helps me get ready for the next day where i can do another workout it's legit man we're not just we're not just hyping it up it works it's clean energy it no jitters no artificial sweeteners like that it's clean ingredients for your body and it works man trust us we're just yeah. we're using it actually yeah. and we're just two regular joe schmoes here exactly. who work out just for just because the heck of it yeah so it's not like you know um they're marketed towards the premier athletes here but i mean it works for everybody and it's going to continue working for everybody here so i mean use it Use promo code 5MMA. Get yourself 25% off your order. It's going to work for everybody. And they have free samples. So even if you don't believe us, I mean, just try it out for free. Foxhoundfuel.com. <laughs> 
So today's show got a lot to talk about here, but we're also going to be joined by special guest Dr. Dino Del Mastro, uh, doctor of sports medicine, a chiropractic um, over in Los Gatos, California. That's brought to you by Wild Bar. A big thank you to Wild Bar for hooking us up together. It's a great interview. So awesome please conversation. Stick we around had. later. That you do. I learned so much, and um, I think uh, when people are fans of combat sports or even pro wrestling. Um, it, it just gives you like a different aspect when you learn all the realms that's behind the actual product as far as, you know, combat sports, um, pro wrestling. Cause you know, when, uh, when we're little, all we see is visually and you're kind of like, Oh, do I want to be a pro athlete or I want to be a pro wrestler or whatever, but you don't really know everything that surrounds, uh, uh an in- industry like that until you're older, but it's cool to learn that there's other stuff that can, can, you can still be involved in, in stuff that you love. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Cause it's all, oh, if I'm not, if I don't make it to the top and that's yeah. it. No, there's a whole network of people who surround these athletes. You could be around the game without being in the game. Exactly. Right? So I think it's a great conversation with, with Dr. Dino. Again, a big, huge thank you to wild bar for hooking that up. But wow. Today's show got a lot to talk about in the world of mixed martial arts and professional wrestling. Impact wrestling had slam reversary. A lot of guests, a lot of surprise names, on there, not maybe not as big as they had originally teased, but still some pretty big surprises. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna have an update on Conor McGregor because it's Conor McGregor month for the UFC and ESPN. It's all Conor McGregor all the time, and we're gonna have our reactions to UFC Fight Night. A future star has probably been made last Saturday. So, also too, so as we're recording this show, it is Sunday afternoon before Money in the Bank. So we'll talk about Money in the Bank next week as it's going to happen right before we record this podcast so albert let's get started with round number one here let me get the timer started timer starting now so we are still living in the after effects of conor mcgregor breaking his ankle against dustin poirier of course at uc 264 again mcgregor's gonna do whatever he can to get that turned into a no contest as opposed to a tko win for dustin poirier i think dana white said he's gonna do whatever he can to get it overturned to a no contest more evidence came out. McGregor said in his camp said he had a stress fracture on the exact same ankle he broke during training camp, but he pushed through it, and that's what caused it to break so easily. It was had nothing to do with Dustin Poirier. He did nothing there. It's all McGregor. He McGregor broke his own ankle, he right? He didn't check nothing, bro. So um, McGregor's posted several photos of himself and just emerging his ankle in, in tape and ice saying, hey, I had this injury going into the fight. Dana White even knew about this injury, but the fight still happened because I'm McGregor. That's what I do. Um, what are your thoughts on McGregor releasing all this stuff prior, uh, after the fact now? Just kind of, is it just more salt into, um, I guess, the salt into the wound? I don't know, but like, just, hey, you know what? This is me. I did it myself. Mm-hmm. Poirier did nothing to, to contribute to this broken ankle. So supposedly all this is going to be some documentary that they're already filming anyways. And to be honest, I think all this was going to come out anyways if he won or lost. Because if you think about it, if he were to win, it would have made it that much spectacular. Because he could say, look, I went in there practically one leg and I shut this guy down. On a broken freaking ankle? Yeah. just like opposed to Kurt Angle, yeah. broken freaking neck. So I, I think it was going to come out regardless. I think all this was going to happen regardless of a win or a loss. Um, I just feel like it's getting pushed a lot faster and sooner because obviously uh, – he wants to show that it was more the injury than Dustin uh, that was the outcome of that fight. So um, I honestly don't have a problem with it. I can see how it can be viewed as salty. But at the same time, I mean, if the facts are there, the facts are there, bro. I mean, like what, you, you, you can't dispute video evidence. You're, Come a, on, bro. you're a bigger McGregor apologist than I am. I saw that stuff. My initial reaction was I didn't know anything about the documentary. Mm. What did he do? The last dance style? Is that what he's doing? with? Yeah. Michael? Okay, whatever. Bro, take the L and go. <laughs> take the L, train back, and come back harder. Don't give all these excuses. Like, we've known for a while now, you can't hang with the top five anymore. One, because you're not, mm-hmm. you're not active enough. You choose not to be active mm-hmm. enough. You just can't come in and expect to beat somebody, the, the, the likes of uh, a Dustin Poirier, who's active, who's a former interim champion, who's fighting two, three times a year. Dustin Poirier is fighting the top five every time he fights. McGregor, the last time you won was against Donald Cerrone, who hasn't been the top five in anything in a long time. Take the L. Maybe 
reevaluate your place in the UFC. You're not going to fight for a belt anymore. You're not going to fight for uh, being the top contender for anything. But you know what? Guess what? You're Conor McGregor. You don't need to fight for a belt anymore. You can keep fighting the likes of a Donald Cerrone and still make a lot of money. And don't worry about the haters saying, oh, you, you can't you can't win a championship. Guess what? You don't have to beat a Charles Oliveira. You don't have to beat a Kahib anymore because, you, I hate to say it, you're kind of bigger than the division right now. And who cares, bro? Take the L and come back and fight somebody else on your level. I do want to point out this. The biggest draws in uh, UFC right now are not champions, right? True. You got Connor. You got George Mazadov. So you got the Diaz brothers. And technically, Max Holloway, who is not a champion, is one of the bigger draws, too. So a lot of the big draws don't have champions. Uh so what I'm trying trying to get at is I don't like you said John Jones, uh, John Jones. I don't think you need uh, when you get to this level. You don't need to be a champion. You just need interesting and good fights. And I think that's the marketing genius behind Connor. People keep uh, bringing up like you said, like I'll oh, just take it and move on. But the thing is, uh, you gotta seize opportunities when you see them. Yeah, I think he knows the belt isn't really something in his near future nor does he need it but let you gotta you got you gotta strike lightning when it's hot and right now it's still the talk of the town um in a way he's promoting this documentary by the time the documentary comes out it's gonna hype up the next fight hopefully he's 100 percent healthy yeah and it all accumulates to another spectacle with a lot of money a lot of interest against and poirier i guess some... against poirier oh but i'm God. telling you i don't you, want to see this fight anymore but i'm telling you it's all about the hype bro you say that now but wait till you see the documentary you might change your mind <laughs> yeah wait till i'm sipping some proper 12 whiskey <laughs> yep. in front of the in front of the tv <laughs> ufc 275 whatever it might be against dustin poirier for and then who knows maybe dustin poirier beats charles, charles Oliveira and becomes champion and right? that, imagine the spectacle then if he's then fighting for the belt take the l come back stronger nate diaz is always gonna be waiting there for you nate diaz lost to leon edwards get diaz versus mcgregor three and then call it a night and cash your big check and go home and be happy bro but don't be posting my ankle was hurt coming into the fight doesn't do anything for you, man. <laughs> it gives fuel to the haters for sure, but also gives fuel, I guess, to the apologists out there as well. That's it for round number one. We got we're gonna come back talk about Impact Wrestling and their Slam Reversary event and what it leads now to the future of all the doors have been opened now, Albert. All the forbidden doors have been opened Ooh. after uh, Slam Reversary. So don't go anywhere. That's coming up next. Five round MMA. Welcome back. Time for round number two. Uh, but professional wrestling is just blowing up right now. There's so much going so on. Hot. So well, hot. We right actually now, have a whole round dedicated to Impact Wrestling. We only have whole rounds for <laughs> WWE and whole rounds for <laughs> AEW. But now we have a whole round dedicated to Impact Wrestling. This past Saturday, they had their Slammiversary event. It was headlined against Kenny Omega versus Sammy Callahan. Omega does retain. But Slammiversary was promoted as it's one of the big events for Impact. They had yeah. like a Samoa Joe tease and an Okada tease well, in the package. Supposedly it all lined up to the ninety days that no compete clause, yeah. thing, right? Is, yeah, that the, was the, the whole thing. The Iconics tease, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Did they show up? Not all of them, but that's a pretty pretty big <laughs> name show up. Uh, no way, Jose. You may remember. I, I don't know what his uh, name is now. I think it was just No Way. Yeah, No Way. <laughs> Chelsea Green showed up. Uh-huh. Um, Thunder Rosa was a surprise um, challenger for the Impact Women's Championship. Mickey James came up at, came up afterwards. So it, that's some pretty big names in professional wrestling here. But the biggest one for me, I marked out hardcore was post fight, post main event, Switchblade himself. K, uh, Jay White came out and just stared down Kenny Omega. Man, that was like I, I got hyped up for that. I am a big Switchblade mark. Who knows what this could lead to, but your thoughts and reaction to the event as a whole and also all these names coming out. And TN, uh, Impact says now, Bound for Glory, which is our next big pay-per-view. We're going to have involvement from AAA. We're going to have involvement from, uh, from uh, NWA, AEW, and New Japan. It's a one, a stir pot of everybody, a melting pot of all professional wrestling happening in Impact. Your thoughts on that, too. Uh, so real quick, um, I was disappointed in the star power of Slammiversary, especially after you do such a big teaser and you kind of were hoping for a bigger name. In all honesty, I think they had always focused on Samoa Joe, but because Samoa Joe ended up going back to NXT, 
Uh, they, I really do think they put all their eggs in the basket with Joe. And once he left, they went the other route, which was, well, let's just make fun of it and get no way Jose. Uh, <laughs> because in all honesty, I think it was almost a parody to the fans yeah. by putting him as the the key role in the whole thing. Because I think everybody knew it was going to be Chelsea Green because the match was set up. It was, it was a, a, mix, a mixed match tag. So it, it's kind of obvious there. Uh, for the women's, though, I honestly thought it was going to be Britt Baker and, or maybe uh, someone from the Iconics, whatever. I did not think Thunder Rosa yeah, at all. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. But I've been seeing Thunder Rosa. I've seen her in AEW. I've seen her compete with good competitors. So with that said, it kind of it wasn't really as um, shocking or as uh, – I think it didn't get the reaction. You didn't pop too hard for that? Yeah, because – You've been seeing Thunder Rosa this whole time. Yeah, different with, organizations. With, with, with good things. So, Jay White really saved the night. Uh, Jay White was the cream of the crop of Slammiversary. And now that uh, I'm talking about Jay White, just so you know, the beef between Kenny and Jay is actually very embedded here. Uh, if people don't know. Because they did take shots at each other. Uh, Young Bucks and the Elite have always said... That they're pretty much doing what they wanted to do with Kenny, or because Kenny was so popular, you know what? Just insert Jay White, and Jay White's kind of just a product of Kenny Omega leaving New Japan or being so over New Japan that it thus gave birth to Jay White. But as we all know, Jay White says, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, he's, uh, he's his I, own man. I am my own star. I am more established." In Japan than anybody else, so there is some real beef here, uh, and they did take shots at each other. So I'm very excited to see what comes out of you. I'm still holding out for my beautiful dream match of uh, uh, Ibushi. Ibushi versus Kenny Omega for all the straps, <laughs> everything on the line, even uh, who's gonna be the, the the guy to propose to who. Yeah. I want it all on the line. I um, think, yeah, I but think, yeah. yeah, Jay White. Awesome. I think to, to go to your point too, where I think fans may have a misconception of thinking that there's only one promotion in Japan and it's New Japan. Uh-huh. Kenny Omega's time in New Japan was very short. Yeah, it was a flash in the past. He actually. made a career wrestling in Japan, but there's other promotions yeah. in Japan. So people are thinking that, okay, yeah, he spent all this time and he doesn't really have that much loyalty to New Japan as a whole. So yeah, him going there, getting the getting the rub off there, becoming a bigger pl- platform star and then bouncing doesn't really do much cuz he he was there maybe for a little bit. He was in DDT for a long time. That's where kind of where we made his 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 mark there. So it wasn't like he was New Japan you know, bread, born and bread, like Jay White. Jay White is a product of the New Japan Dojo, Mm -hmm. born and bread. He is a New Japan star. For for the Yamaks to say that, okay, we're just going to insert Jay White into the storyline that Kenny Omega was, Jay White isn't a replacement. He isn't an insert. He is his own star, I think, too. And there's this real beef where uh, Tama Tonga and the Girls of Destiny are saying, no, we're the real Bullet Club. It's Jay White, myself. It's uh, Bad Luck Fale. Young Bucks, Cody, even Machine Gun, and then the Good Brothers, you guys are posers, man. We're hardcore bullet club. This is us. You guys are fake. You guys are just stealing stealing our thunder here. So if this leads to uh, the Girls of Destiny coming in here, if Bad Luck Fale coming in here and backing Jay White, I'm all for it, man. Yeah. Granted, I, I don't think the Young Bucks are going to step foot into this. I think, I think they're scared, too. Legit. <laughs> so I think a good match between the Good Brothers and, and Girls of Destiny, that's that's awesome. Kenny versus Jay White, that's going to be awesome. But what is it? I almost think I was thinking about this and like how we're going to go along here, dude, because it's wrestling. But how Impact does seem the perfect meeting place for all these organizations, yeah. right? AEW has too much stake with... I think all their all their actual roster and TNT TNT is not gonna say yeah. well I don't want this guy one time yeah Jay White's cool but is he is he an actual AEW wrestler well no he wrestled for an organization don't give him TV time mm-hmm. right well this guy's cool where's he from Impact they're on Access TV I'm not gonna promote yeah somebody else Impact is like the perfect breeding ground for this and I yeah. think too what what helps them out is that Scott D'Amore and Don Callis are lifelong. They speak professional wrestling language. They know how promoters are to think. 
and for Impact Wrestling to be this breeding ground, the meeting place, the arena for all these guys to work together, I think it's perfect. Yeah. And because it's only going to help Impact because they have the huge library of back catalogs of all almost all the top stars today have stepped foot in TNA, now Impact Wrestling. Laugh as much as you want as Impact. They've been around a lot longer than a Ted Turner owned WCW. So... Do you think Impact is a perfect breeding ground for all this place, for the arena for all these organizations to share their talent? Not only that, I think it's something they all want to prove because everybody knows that it's WWE, then AEW, and Impact way behind. Especially if you go look at the rating numbers, uh, Impact, compared to the rest, barely registers. And I think by them doing these kind of special moments in Impact, if they see a, 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 a climb in viewership, and uh you know uh social media presence it's just proving uh all these wrestlers what they've been saying is right where they're saying like if you give us the platform we can compete with wwe so i think in a way not only is it the perfect place it's the perfect place to prove your point it's the perfect place to prove that Kenny should have been in WWE from day one. That's the guy that you guys missed out on. That's people like Jay White who go to New Japan can be an established star outside of America and still make money in America. So I think this is a, a, a perfect storm that we're seeing here and a perfect place to do it. Again, I think AW has too much invested in the Hangman Pages, the Darby Allens, uh, and the Dark Order. Dark Order. There's just too much stuff where they got to keep these guys going without uh, any other distractions that might kind of overshadow what they got going there. Yeah, I think p- people who talk crap about well, what's AEW done for Impact, what's AEW done for New Japan, they got their own stars to worry about. And like I said, I think it's TNT saying we don't want to promote that, other yeah. people's stars. But, man, look at this picture, man. I got goosebumps. Beautiful you got Jay picture. White. You got the Good Brothers, Don Callis, can't wait to stare down. Are you kidding me, bro? I got goosebumps. I'm, a, I'm barking <laughs> out right now, man. I'm barking out. <laughs> I'm a 35 year old man marking out on wrestling. What, what a great time to wow. be a pro wrestling fan! It's just like it, for all you guys online who are comp- fighting with each other, just enjoy it, man. Seriously, milk it in. I don't bro. even know when's the next time we're gonna get something this great. Ooh, milk it in. That's it for round number two. We're gonna come back, switch gears, talk about UFC Fight Night, a new, a, probably a future star in the UFC lightweight division. But he has a very familiar background to all of us out there. So that's, we're gonna talk about that coming up next. Five round MMA. Welcome back. Time for round number three. USC fight night. Makachev versus Moises took place this past Saturday. Uh, let me get the timer started real quick. Timer started. Five minutes. Um, also, the return of Misha Tate after a four-year layoff. I thought it was a lot longer than that, but it was mm-hmm. only four years. Um, you want to start with the main event, or you want to go with Misha let, Tate first? Let's go with Misha Tate first. So, Misha Tate comes back in the 135-pound division after a four-year break. She you know, became a mother, was doing some commentary. And kind of, hey, I'm coming back. UFCs, they're welcoming me back here. She had a pretty a notable challenge in uh, Marion Renault here. But it, Misha Tate made it look pretty easy, right? Yeah, but I think it was intended to uh, not be that high level of competition to see where she's at. But hey, I think she checked every box in this performance. She looked in tremendous shape. I have never seen... Misha Tate looked so cut up, bro. <laughs> she looked she was looking fabulous. I mean, she was she her her stand up looked super crisp, super clean. Uh she showed her takedown. She showed uh her a little bit of submission game in there. And then finally, she showed she can finish in this division. Mm-hmm. So to me, she checked out every box you have to check out to say, hey, um, this person is a competitor. I however <sighs> Don't want to see her go up against a man of news just yet. But bro, what's going to happen, man? If, if I were the booker, right, I would have her fight two more times Not gonna happen. before man of news. But, Not going to happen. But but with that said, can we just get one more fight Not before man of news? Because we really need to see if she's – how can I say it? Because the man of news is in our, in our own category right now. We got to see that Misha Tate – can enter that category. And in order to do that, you got to face someone at least that has either given a man of news uh, a bit of trouble or for or showed a little competition against man of news to see, to compare where Misha Tate's at. Uh, 
Because look, and this, this is the only reason I, I say this too. If you throw Misha Tate to Amanda Nunes and she gets demolished like uh, Megan did, you lose a superstar. Megan was such a superstar and, and they kind of lost her because they they didn't really handle her stock that well, I, I believe. So I just don't want to, I don't want this women division to fizzle out. I want to keep it hot. I want to I want to be excited to see who Amanda Nunes faces. So to me, it's only beneficial if she fights at least one more time before the bell. Uh, Albert, you're so naive. I love it. <laughs> so just you thinking the UFC cares about Misha Tate and giving her get, making sure she's ready for the title before this fight with Mary Renault, who's not retired now. This is her retirement fight. Mm-hmm. So she goes off on an L, but good career here. She's one of the you know, first kind of pioneers of uh, women's mixed martial arts. Misha Tate said before she came back, I'm looking at the title fight. After this fight, she said, I didn't come back just to fight. I came back for a title fight. Amanda Nunes has cleared this 135 division. There's nobody left here. I still think the UFC enticed Misha Tate. Hey, come back just one fight. You're still in your your mid-30s. You're still in shape. Come back. You're a name. We could promote you as a former champion. You beat Holly Holm. You've been in the likes there with, you know, you're a tough coach. You've been in the likes with Ronda Rousey. So people know you. We need somebody to put on a poster against Manny Nunes who would help sell pay-per-views. Misha, please come back. She came back. She was victorious. She's gonna get me. She's gonna get Manny Nunes next. It's because it's a name. <sighs> and I love how like you're just so thinking the UFC is gonna give her uh-huh. easier into time. No. I guarantee you the next time we see Misha Tate's name, it's going to be an announcement that she's fighting Amanda Nunes next. I just, I, I Amanda's re- going to say yes because it's a name. It's going to be some pay-per-view buys for her, and it's going to be another notch on Nunes' belt. Say, I just beat another Hall of Famer. I am the women's GOAT. Feed me more. Who else is next? Is anybody else next at all? I'm just going to hang out here, too. I just feel it's a disservice to MMA by not building this up a little bit more. But at the same time, I can see that happening. Yeah. Uh, main event. Islam Mahashev, I think I'm butchering that name, but I'm trying my best to do it, submits Tiago Moises in the fourth round. I think it went a little longer than people had expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, Islam is a was it a student of Kahib Nargaminov. He says, I'm, I'm on my way to becoming just like Kahib here. He proved that with his grappling and just smothering Moises. Future champion, 155, you think? It's looking that way. Maybe. And it's not that big of a maybe just because uh, I understand that it's hard for him to find competition because a lot of people don't sign uh, up to face him. But in all reality, he needs to face a top 10 opponent to really see yeah. if he is the, the, this this next Kahib uh, to, to come out of here. And you and in, like even though he had a good performance, he looked amazing, uh, submitted a, a black belt. <laughs> who, yeah. who's known for his jiu-jitsu. Um, I get all that, but you got to see him face top comp- competition. And in all honesty, I say you go the opposite route where they say, you know, uh, fights uh, styles make fights. I say give him Justin Gaethje, bro. I was going to say that, yeah. I know he called out uh, RDA. Yeah. And I, I understand that's also a big name. That's a awesome matchup. But in all honesty... I think he needs to go to the deeper end, and I think that's Justin Gaethje. And not just that, Justin Gaethje is known as a stand-up fighter. Um, one of the criticisms, if you have any, uh, that Islam has is the stand-up. Because Moises was able to do some good stand-up against him. So I think you just go the opposite route and give him Justin Gaethje. I know RDA will give him a look over here and there. But I honestly think the better matchup is Justin Gaethje. Yeah, no, he's also Islam's also been calling out Tony Ferguson. I mean, come uh, on, I, I, th- I think Tony you're, needs to get a couple. You're just, of his you're, own, yeah. you're, you're just kind of don't, yeah. don't, don't kick the man while he's down. Exactly. Yeah. I think if you want to prove yourself, if you think you're as good as that level, well, Jason Gaethje beat Tony Ferguson. Uh, Benel Darnouche beat Tony Ferguson. Call those guys out and see yeah. exactly where you stand in this division. That way, we get a true gauge of where you're at because I know he says he wants to make Kahib proud and have that fight that never happened. No, let Kahib fight, fight his own battles. Mm-hmm. And like you said, beating Tony Ferguson now, it breaks my heart to say this, but beating it Tony Ferguson now at this stage of here doesn't have much value to it, but beat the guys who beat him, mm-hmm. then we're talking, yeah, bro. Yeah, exactly. Now we're talking. Now, if you can get past a Darnoosh or a Justin Gaethje, Bro, then you are literally on that same level of Charles Oliveira, and he's a champion right now. So, um, even Michael Chandler, Michael Chandler, if you want, if man, if you want to really go in, go in, bro. If you're talking, 
if you're talking big game, yeah, there's big game out there, yeah. especially in the lightweight division. Yeah. But I do want, I do think Justin Gaethje is the perfect opponent uh, for Islam right now. I like it. Or if the UFC really hates him, uh, you want to get rid of Dustin Poirier, put him against Dustin Poirier, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for round number three. We're going to come back with a great interview with Dr. Dino Del Mastro, chiropractic sports medicine who actually worked with Islam, too. So we'll talk about that coming up next. Uh, that interview is brought to you by Wild Bar. A big thank you to them. So make sure to stick around for that. It's going to be great. Don't go anywhere. It's coming up next. Five Round MMA. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us here. We have us with here live, Dr. Dino Del Mastro, brought to you by Wild Bar. Doctor, how you doing? Real good. Thanks a lot for uh, taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah, Dr. Dino, I want to thank you again. Uh, just a big shout out to Wild Bar for hooking us up, getting us connected here. Uh, Dr. Dino is a doctor of chiropractic medicine, certified primary spine practitioner. He is mostly out of Los Gatos Sports Chiro Clinic in Los Gatos, California. Uh, Dr. Dino, real quick, um, for you, how are you doing on this Sunday? Sorry. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, I just got done working on, on one of my one of my grappling, one of my MMA athletes. So. Saturday, Sunday, I don't mind stopping by the office when I when I get to work with uh, some fun people and try to try to keep them getting out there and train their hardest. I know you have a lot of uh, a high clientele in the combat sports world. What's it like? You know, obviously that they have different schedules. They're training, you know, seven days a week. You know, a lot of times doing two a days. What's it like working with them on their kind of crazy schedule? Sometimes, sometimes they need work right after a fight, right before right before a fight. Can I talk about the crazy schedules you see combat sports athletes go through. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It, it, it's a crazy schedule for sure. Um, you know, a lot of times week to week with our normal patients, the people who are more like myself, yourself, um, you know, we have a regular work schedule and we get injured. And we're a little bit more, you can expect what's coming in. Um, but with the combat sports athletes, especially when they're in camp more than anything else, you know, there's a lot of things going on. A lot of times, one, their schedule isn't necessarily their schedule. You know, they have they have teammates that have to meet with them at certain times. Their coaches are pulling them in certain directions. So they're already kind of fighting that schedule, which is tough, yet alone the day-to-day -day cornucopia of what type of injury they could come in with. You know, someone that I was working on yesterday who had a slightly sprained ankle could call me tonight and be like, hey, man, my wrist is killing me. Uh, we got to work on this too. So it's, it's, it's fun, and, you know, it's really – I enjoy doing it because it keeps me on my toes. And every day, every night, you know, I might have to go – hop online, I might have to go pull out some of the old textbooks and say, all right, well, you know, hey, I haven't seen this injury in a long time. Let me do my research on it to make sure that I can give the athletes the, the best edge in their recovery so that they can get back out there on the mat and train as hard as they can the next day. Yeah, I'm going to talk about your background a little bit. How long have you been, um, just your education, how long have you been Los Gatos, kind of stuff. That, what got you into sports medicine? Sure. So uh, you guys will really appreciate this this story. Um, so I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and um, I grew up, I started wrestling and judo when I was five years old, and uh, I used to be pretty competitive in wrestling throughout, you know, junior high, high school. Same with judo. I competed on the national and international scene a little bit, and um, when I was getting ready to, to graduate college, I actually, I tore my ACL. Um, at the time, I was studying health and physical education. So ideally, I wanted to be like a high school health or PE mm -hmm. teacher and then coach wrestling on the side. And that way, I would still have time to train because, you know, teachers, they got out of school a little bit earlier. You have summers off. I wasn't married, didn't have kids at the time. So I was like, wow, what a, what a great career for someone who wants to still train at a high level, which I did with judo. Um, long story short, after I graduated university back in Pennsylvania, Moved out to California so that I could hopefully train and do judo at San Jose State. Um, in, in a short period of time, I tore my ACL two more times. Oh, wow. So all in all, I've had three ACL reconstructive surgeries, which uh, th that's not a short rehab process. You know, you're talking six months bare minimum after an ACL injury before you're back on the mat. So I, I refer to that time as my quarter life crisis where I was like, man, I, I was going to be a teacher and I was going to move out to California and, you know, maybe – maybe take a shot at doing some international competition for judo, maybe go to Worlds or Olympics one day, and now I'm three ACLs gone and I'm only 23 years old. Wow. Um, wow. So that made me really – I had some downtime and I thought about it and I said, well, you know, what can, what can I do now? I think it's probably over for me, but what do I want to do now? I said, I have so much knowledge just from my own injuries. Maybe I should look into, you know, going to chiropractic or physical therapy school so that I can help people 
one, prevent these injuries, and two, be able to sympathize with them when they are hurt and say, hey, you know, I know I know it sucks being off the mat. I know you want to get back out there and do what you want to do, but if you do the things that I tell you to do, we're going to get you there, and we're going to get you better than you were before. So, um, so after the third ACL surgery, I went into chiropractic school, and I graduated chiro school back in 2010, so it's been 11 years now that I've been working as a doctor of chiropractic. And uh, here in the South Bay area in general, I've moved around a little bit, but I'm currently in Los Gatos. And I think because of my background in judo and wrestling, and now I'm a purple belt in jujitsu, I think that that's what kind of attracts a lot of these athletes coming into me. Because, you know, when they explain to me, hey, you know, I, I heard a pop in my knee from a knee bar, or I was trying to throw somebody with Ochigari and, you know, I felt something go out my shoulder that I understand what that means. And I can help them get better faster. So I, I think that's kind of what got my foot in the door with working with a lot of these athletes. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, you can speak their language almost, right? And that kind of definitely yeah. helps. Because I know, you know, just for personally, you want to have a doctor you're comfortable with. You both understand each other. You know, we're always going, like, well, I have, I have this weird kind of tingling in my shoulder. I don't know how to explain it. And like you said, you just hit the nail like that. I, they, you, know, you know exactly what they're coming from, what their kind of training grind is. And when did you notice um, starting to get a more influx of combat sports athletes into your clinic? Did it happen slowly? Was it just like one person, like word of mouth? When did you start noticing, okay, well, this, this guy's jiu-jitsu, and we have a mixed martial artist, and we have a judo practitioner here. When did you start, no start noticing uh, word getting out about you and your clinic? Yeah, so – Boy, it, it's definitely, and this is one of the things, so I get a lot of chiropractic students, a lot of uh, physical therapy students that say, wow, that's really cool that you get to work on all these athletes. Like, that's my dream. Um, you know, what do you do? Like, what, what's the move? And uh, man, it took me, I would say about two years ago was when I started to notice. I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm starting to become the guy. Mm -hmm. Like, pretty much everybody in combat sports in the area, whether it's, it's jujitsu, um, high level wrestlers, mixed martial arts, judo, like when the big names start getting hurt, they're starting to come to me and they're starting to reach out to me. Um, it took it took a long time and it was 100 percent word of mouth. And then kind of like what we're doing here, the power of social media, boy, just to be able to cast that wider net. Um, I, I would like to give a shout out because the three there's I'm not sure what order they came in. There were three <laughs> MMA athletes that those were the ones that got my foot in the door. And it just kind of, it was a slow creep open. And then about two years ago, it was kind of the, if a big name's in town, I, I have a good feeling they're going to reach out to me now just because there's so much word about the gym. But my first three athletes, uh, one of them's up here on the wall. His name's Adam Antolin. Mm -hmm. um, he's fought in, you know, he's been on the Ultimate Fighter. He's yeah. been in Bellator. Um, Adam Antolin, James Terry, who's fought in Bellator and Strike Force. And uh, Sam Spengler, who I think he did, he did some smaller shows. He might have fought in the Bellator too. But those are my first three guys. And uh, I, actually, I actually met James Terry while I was in chiropractic school working as a personal trainer. I had just moved from Pennsylvania. I was in Cairo school. James had just moved up from Arizona. And he was starting his career in MMA. And, uh, yeah, those were kind of my, my first guys that started coming in. And with social media, as I could say, hey, you know, let me, let me, let me post a picture of us. And, you know, you could post a picture that you were here with me and, hey, if any of the guys get hurt or if anybody, you know, has something that's going on or if someone just feels beat up and they need more time to work on the recovery, um, you know, I speak the language, so I'd love to be that guy. And uh, it, it, it took a long time, you know. A, a lot of times people were asking, well, does such and such see you? No. Does such and such see you? No. Because a lot of those people, once they've kind of established their careers, mm -hmm. they already have their person. They already have their team around them that they, that they trust and – you know, they, they've had their method that's been working. They don't want to change anything. Yeah. But now I'm kind of in a position where just over the past few years, I've been getting a lot of the new guys that come out and they don't know anybody and they don't have anybody. So then their word of mouth, hey, you know, I, I asked who works on you guys and for my training partners said your name, they're coming in. Yeah. They're coming in to see me. So, um, so it's been exciting, especially over the past few years, seeing some of these guys who would move out, who are maybe high level decorated collegiate wrestlers. And, uh, you know, now they're one, two, three, four, no fight in Bellator. It's been, uh, it, it's been very much a snowball, but it definitely, it took, it took some time for sure. Uh, actually to, to stay with this realm, it's funny because, um, uh, I actually follow a lot of pro wrestling. We follow pro wrestling and it's almost feels like either this was the best cape secret in the industry or athletes are just getting smarter because, uh, prior to, I want to say, 
15, 16. I didn't even know uh, pro athletes even sought out like a chiropractor or whatever. But now you see every major MMA have uh, like a residence uh, there, someone there for them. Uh, even in pro wrestling, they have a guy that travels with them. Um, do you think it was just always like this best kept secret? Or do you think the athletes are just starting to get like smart and concentrate more on their, their body as, you know, health and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a little bit of both, really. Um, I, I think that the athletes are starting to realize, like, I think especially in combat sports, one of the big problems is, hey, tough through it. You know, you, you got to be this mm-hmm. tough mentality, yeah. which, which is true. And one of the things that I always ask people is, are you hurt or are you injured? If you're hurt, yeah, get your ass back out there on the mat and you keep training. I'll give you some things to tune you up and keep you going. But if you're hurt, you can get back out there. But if you're injured, that's different. You need to stop. You need to take some time out. And especially, you know, the higher up you are in your career, if now you are, you know, fighting in Bellator, fighting in UFC, you need to be fixed before you get back out there. You don't want to go out there fighting it, you know, 50% knowing, hey, I got this thing. And if, if they hit me here or if they grab me here, like it's going to be a big problem because we're talking long term career here and we're talking longevity. Um, and likewise, I think now and especially with social media, a lot of the athletes are seeing, oh, wow, this guy, this guy's getting stretched out like every day. Oh, this, this, this girl's getting her neck adjusted. And man, I should, I should probably do something to help me be able to train just that one or 2% harder every day. And I think that's really kind of helped not just myself, but lots of other chiropractors working with NFL, NHL athletes. Um, the UFC Performance Training Institute out in Vegas, they have a full-time chiropractor, full-time physical therapist there. So, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. A lot of these highest level people are saying, you know, what do I need to do to be able to get one more fight out of my career? What do I need, need to do to be able to train 1% hard tomorrow? And uh, that's something that we're able to provide them. Yeah, and I, you, you'd mentioned you know, getting fighters who are starting off in their career. Um, one of your people you worked on just made invented UFC Fight Night, Islam Makachev. Um, yeah, you say like your your name's getting out there, your clinic's getting out there, but I think too, like you say, these athletes, they invest in their bodies, their bodies are their tool. And if you weren't as good as you are, they wouldn't say, no, I don't, I don't trust that guy. But the proof is in the pudding with them. They're, they're saying Dr. Dino is the person to go to. Um, what's it like kind of seeing like th- these fighters, you know, work at a high level UFC main event fighter and all of a sudden, yeah, go to him, go to him. It must feel very good, right? Proud in your work. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, it, it's kind of slowly but surely crept up over my career, but definitely at the start of fight camp when I, when I had Islam, when he reached out to me and, uh, you know, I'm a fan of the guy. I know who he is. I was watching his fight with Drew Dober and I was loving his inside trip takedowns, his foot sweeps, all, all of his amazing throws. And then one day, just to, you know, look at your phone and you get a message from someone who you're a fan of who says, you know, hey, I, I want to come in. I, I want you to help me get ready for this fight. I was pumped. I was really excited for it. And, um, you know, one of the one of the most important things when I'm working on someone like that is is I got to put the fan away, though. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I didn't ask him if I could even so much as take a picture with him for the first couple of weeks when I was working with him. It was straight to business. He came in. We said, hey, you know, how's your body feeling? What can what role can I play in the next eight weeks to help you get out there and train your best every day so that you can perform your best on July 17th in UFC? And um, so we work together on that. And a big part of what I de- do is I tell you what I think we should do. And then when you come back the next visit, hey, what do you want more of today? What do you want less of? And kind of give me the updates on how your body's feeling. And we'll do our best to, to keep you in one piece because the, the fact of the matter is it's combat sports. You know, the, the name of the game is trying to injure your opponent, whether it's in the cage or whether it's your buddy on the mat that you're training with every day. So you're you're going to get beat up. And if whether it's jujitsu or you're a wrestler in high school or you do Muay Thai on the weekends or you're fighting a main event in the UFC, you're going to have aches and pains and things that are going to bug you out. And to have someone evaluate that and tell you, are you hurt or is this an injury and what things do you need to do to get yourself feeling your best is – I think it's a huge, huge person to have on your team. Yeah, and sticking with that, we, we do have a, a, some combat sports athletes who watch this show. What advice can you give to them to listen to their body to say to you know so where they're hurt as opposed to being injured? What are some things you kind of hey, if you're feeling this pain, maybe stop this or maybe alter this. What what's some advice you can give out to those who are training right now? Say hey, if you're feeling this or experiencing this, maybe switch it up. Or what are some most common things you kind of hear all the time? 
Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll address kind of both of those subjects. So the first one, which is, you know, when do I need to go seek help? When do I need to get to get worked on? Um, I did actually a, a little Instagram reel, which man, I, I, need, I need to up my game on that. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> figuring it out. I'm sure you guys know how it is. Every time yeah. you're like, wait, that's kind of cool. I should learn how to post things like that. Um, I posted a reel and one of the most common, whether it's, you know, my, my mom and dad, aunt, aunt and uncle, or it's someone at the highest level who's fighting professionally. I do very simple, you know, green light, yellow light, red light, mm. green light. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. My shoulder was kind of bothering me yesterday after training. You go to practice, you warm up, feels fine. You drill, feels fine. You roll that day, feels fine. Hey, keep going. Yellow light. Okay. You wake up. Ah, man. Yeah. My shoulder, it's kind of bugging me. Warm ups, eh, not too bad. Drilling, eh, I can feel it. Rolling, I can feel it, but it's not really stopping me from doing anything. Yeah, keep going, proceed with caution. That might be a good time to reach out to someone like myself just to say, hey, what can I do to prevent it from getting worse? But that's still a time that I say, you know, that's more of a, you're hurt, you're not injured. If you're able to get out there and still perform and the pain isn't getting worse, then yellow light, suck it up, buttercup. Mm. Um, and then, Red light is a little bit more of it starts as a yellow light. So you're training. Ah, okay, this shoulder's bugging me. I went to frame and push off, and I kind of posted on my elbow. And, oh, okay, I had to like stop. I told my partner, hey, get off for a second. Okay, let's go again. Here we go. Like, no, that's a red light, and that's there's something wrong with that. And you need to not only know what is wrong with it, but know how much time that you need to maybe. And again, I'm not a big take time off of training, take time off of the mat. I'm big on. Get back on the mat, but do a lot of ABC, and let's just not do X, Y, Z yet. We'll get there, but not quite yet. Mm. Um, and then kind of going back to the second part of that question, which I would say for me, the most common things that I see, which which it, it's funny because I've been through it so much, is knee injuries, um, especially in all the grappling sports. Well, I, am. I see it a lot in striking, strikers also. Um, knee injuries of all different sorts, you know, whether it was a, a full blown ACL, I, I've had several of the athletes come in and I had to be the bearer of bad news and say, Hey, you know, this is, I'm pretty sure you have an ACL tear and you're going to need to get this fixed and you're going to, you're going to be out of the game for a little while, but let's get you better. Let's work on it. Let's do some prehab so that you go into surgery, feeling your best. And then I know what we got to do after the surgery to get you where you need to be. I would say knee injuries, and I see a lot of, especially in, in grappling sports and when people get clinched and pulled down, mm -hmm. just because it puts a lot of stress on the spine, um, low back and neck injuries. And those are generally things that I can help out with quite a bit, and they're not something that really needs surgery or even necessarily time off, but it is important to identify, okay, what, what structure is causing that pain? Is it the joint? Is it the disc? Is it the nerve? Are the muscles overstrained? And then showing the athlete and showing the patient exercise and things that they can do on their own to help make this one of those like, okay, if I do this, this, and this, I can get out of the mat and I can roll and I'm good and I'm staying in that yellow light zone. What I think I appreciate too about your social media and your uh, your presence on all those platforms is when you give information like this, you, you're educating people. I've seen a ton of these other chiropractic clinics where all they do is just post videos of them popping people's backs and necks, and that's it. No explanation what they're doing, <laughs> why they're doing it. Yeah, it sounds cool and it sounds freaky, but that's it. That's all they post. But I think if people follow you on, on social media, they'll say you're going to learn something and you're not just there for the simple clicks of, hey, here's me cracking somebody's back. Enjoy. And I think that's really showing your success in getting getting these top level fighters and also getting like, you know, uh, other companies like, like a lot like wild bar who want to be yep. associated with you and the Los Gatos sports clinic. Can you talk about the team you put together at Los Gatos sports clinic, um, sports car clinic and just the, the environment you guys are fostering for the everyday athlete, for the athletes, for the everyday people, um, you, you, sports medicine, but you don't have to be a top level athlete to, to get treatment. Can I talk about the, the clinic as a whole, please? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, it, it that is a common thing that I get. Sometimes a new patient comes in and they look at all the posters up on the wall and they say, wow, wow, I don't, am I in the right place? I'm not a pro athlete like them. And I have to reassure them, this is probably the 10% of my business. Mm. Um, the other 90% are, are people like, like us three. Yep. You know, we, yeah. we work, we have our regular lives, maybe you have a family. You know, we, we just want to do our best and, you know, exercise on weekends, whether it's, and I don't care if it's you're doing Orange Theory Fitness. I don't care if it's, you know, Soul Cycle Spin, if you do CrossFit, if you train Jiu-Jitsu or boxing, whatever it may be, um, the 90% of my clients are simply 
everyday people like ourselves who say, you know what, I'm in this for a journey. I enjoy training this mentally, emotionally, physically. I feel better when I train. This injury has really been a bummer. It's set me back. What can I do so that I can get back to CrossFit or Soul Cycle or doing my triathlon? So um, it's definitely not something. Obviously, the the top tier athletes, I think they they can see the biggest benefit from it right away, just because their body is their their job and it's everything. So they can feel right away, and I get a lot of quick results where they're like, "Wow, this is really making a big difference." Our kind of more weekend warrior and just like our our average type of person. They come in with an injury, and my goal, again, is to talk to them and explain to them, here's what you need to do to get back as quickly as possible. I would rather that you slowly heal up, but you're still able to do your sport versus you come in day one and say, hey, you know, I want to get back to running. And I say, all right, six weeks off of running. You know, no, nobody wants to hear it. And, and the compliance with that is going to be so low. So that's another reason why kind of when it, when it comes to what we do at our clinic, um, on any given day, you'll see someone looking up at our diplomas and saying, wait, are you guys are you guys massage therapists? Are you physical therapists? Are you chiropractors? And um, I have a really great team here. We have uh, my three people that I'm working with here day to day. We have Olivia Hill. She's a certified athletic trainer. Um, her background's kind of like working in the locker room with the high school and college athletes and taping up the, the ankles and getting them right back together. Uh, we have Dr. Erica. She was a division one swimmer in college. And uh, so she is, has an extensive knowledge base of helping with kind of swimming type of injuries, you know, and again, her bread and butter is still just our everyday person, but it's nice that you have people who have been there. You know, we've been hurt. We've had these injuries. All of us are still very active on our own. Uh, our, our other doctor, Dr. Hayden Stanley, he played baseball in college and he kind of helps me out with a lot of the higher profile athlete. Um, so he's coming coming along real nicely, and uh, he's someone that I know that I can trust my top level athletes with when I'm out of town too. So it's important to have that team there because there's only so many hours in the day, right? Yep. Yeah. And the more the more athletes that you start to see, the more higher profile, the more exposure you get, the less time you have. So I think it's really important to surround yourself with good people so that you know if I want to go on vacation, if it, it used to be if I would go on vacation, it was kind of a problem. Like I felt guilty. I'm like, man, you know my such and such has, has a fight coming up in two weeks and be gone the week before. Now you got to surround yourself with good people and build a good team so that we can all lean on each other. If Dr. Hayden goes on vacation, he knows I can take his people. If I, if I'm out of town, I know Dr. Eric can, can see our athletes and take great care of them as well. So building this kind of, and, and ultimately the goal is to have a clinic where everybody wants to come and be a part of. So all the students in chiropractic school, we we're talking right now we're in the works of working some out with a um with a chinese medicine doctor so that we can have some acupuncture and mm, some herbal really? things like in-house as well so that we can have that one-stop shop where hey we've got enough providers here to take care of it doesn't matter if it's your whole baseball team it doesn't matter if aka wants to turn this into their locker room at 2 p.m on <laughs> thursday um we're going to get everyone sorted out and if you want you know if, hey acupuncture's worked better for me in the past cool we got someone over here he's a rock star let's take him but, you know, as you know, these things, people see the end result and they see like, wow, it's really cool that you get, how do you get that? You're really lucky you get to work with all those guys. Man, you wouldn't have been saying that 12 years ago when I was, hey, just remember, if anybody at your gym gym gets hurt, like, I can help them. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Maybe we'll try you out one day. So it's like anything else, though. You know, you put your head down, you grind, and, you know, if you've got a good thing and if you genuinely believe, like, I'm the right person to be doing this, I genuinely have believed since day one that I'm probably the best person around to help take these combat sports athletes to the next level. I have the personal experience. I still train. I, I have an injury that I'm getting over right now. Um, I'm still in the trenches myself. I genuinely believe from day one that if I could get my foot in the door, I could help all these athletes reach their, reach their potential. But, you know, it took, it took eight years total to get there, but uh, I'm happy that I'm there right now. And, I look forward to helping more people and seeing more uh, more athletes move towards their dreams too. That is awesome. It's been a journey, right, Doctor? Absolutely, always, always. Well, I want to thank you for again for uh, taking the time to talk with us today. Really appreciate. It. Where can people get a hold of you on social media to see your great videos? And if they're in the Los Gatos area, where can they get a hold of the website for the Los Gatos Sports Cairo Clinic? And um, yeah, just talk talk about your great team and where people get a hold of you and see more of you. Yeah, totally. So. Um, Best thing to do is just hop on my Instagram. I'm pretty active on that. If you just type in my name, 
Dr. Dino Del Mastro, DCPSP. It's 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 a long long thing, but if you start talk, typing in Dr. D I N O, you'll you'll probably start to find me. Uh, so it's Dr. Dino DCPSP, and um, my website, if you're in the area, is Los Gatos Sports Cairo, which my website's also on my Instagram and the profile. And it's really nice and easy. If anybody wants to get in, you know, if you have a question, you can always reach out. But the best thing to do is just hop, click on our website. There's a book now, book now, book now. It's spammed all over our website. All you have to do is click that. You can instantly, like, live time, see my schedule. So if you're like, oh, I want to get in on Thursday, you can just click, okay, Thursday. Oh, he has a 2 o'clock. I finish work at 1. Boom. Put your name on there, and uh, we can get you seen. And, again, you know, if my schedule's booked up and, you know, or if I'm out of town, you say, ah, man, I, I really need to be seen this week, but Dr. Dino's not there. Hey, hop on, please. Hop on Dr. Erica. Hop on Dr. Hayden's schedule. They're going to take just as good a care of, of you, if not better. They're rock stars, and, and they're the ones that work on me when I'm hurt. So, um, you know, one way or another, you hop on our website, LosGatosSportsCairo.com, and you'll be able to get a hold of us. Dr. Daniel Masha, thank you so much. We'll have you on again in the near future. Again, thank you so much for this. Brought to you by Wild Bar. Dr. Dino, we'll talk to you later. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your time. Have a good one. All right, thank you. Five-round MMA. All right, everyone, that's a great interview with Dr. Dino Del Mastro, direct doctor of chiropractic sports medicine, certified primary spine practitioner out of Los Gatos Sports Cairo Clinic. A big thank you to Wild Bar for hooking that interview up. A uh, great interview. Learned some stuff here. Um, again, if you want to follow him, make sure he tagged all of his social media on there. We'll tag him in here on this and on the bottom of the comments of this um, description for this video, this episode, a big thank you to Wild Bar for hooking that up. Go to wildbar.co to get your one of three great flavors, cherry, blueberry, or pineapple, nutrition-dense bars, natural, paleo, vegan, no refined sugars, non-GMO, gluten-free, just made with the ingredients you can pronounce and stuff. Hey, that tastes good. I want some of them. When you're at wildbar.co, use promo code 5 MMA 15 for 15% off your order. That's wildbar.co. And a big, huge thank you to Foxhound Fuel. Train hard, stay sharp. Get one of three or all three of their pre-workout, the ready workout hydration, or their post-workout recovery formulas here to get the best and most out of your workouts. Go to foxhoundfuel.com. Use promo code 5MMA for 25% off your order. Please do that. That lets, it, lets them know that we sent you here. A big thank you to Foxhound Fuel and Wild Bar for supporting us, supporting this podcast. We've got the future is going to look bright for five-round MMA. A big thank you to Dr. Dino Delmasio for giving us his time and his expertise on that. Albert, what do you got? I just want to say, uh, I don't. I, I mean, I don't want to toot our own horn, but Sparkles by Val is backed up, and I don't want to say it was because Five Round MMA said anything, but uh, Awesome Cups. Uh, if you still, if you, if you want to go all the way back to a couple episodes, uh, we might bring the cup and, sh- and show you what the we're tumblers, talking about. Yep. Yeah, there's. Uh, she makes some good tumblers. She made some cool Five Round MMA ones that she's more than willing to do uh, for people. But right now, she's. Backed up, not and taking not orders. Taking new Too many orders, orders for hers. But yeah. if you want to see her work, go to Instagram Sparkles by Val. Um, her great stuff there. Albert's Chalice right there. He drinks out of every episode here. Sparkles by Val, Wild Bard, and Foxhound Fuel. It takes a village to get this podcast yeah. going, man. So <laughs> we appreciate everybody's help here. Again, make sure to listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Podomatic, Spotify, wherever you get your audio podcasts. We're available. Also, we're on YouTube, so please, if you're listening, so watch us on YouTube or listen to us on YouTube, leave a comment, like, subscribe, give us a rating on on Apple I, Apple Podcasts to let let them know people are listening to us here. Again, thank you so much for everybody for tuning in this week. Keep up to date with us on social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all at Five Round MMA. It's F I V E Round MMA. Please visit Five Round. MMA.com. We're actually going to be revamping that website pretty soon, so come check that out. That's 5 round MMA.com for the new look. We also have a new logo coming out too, right, Albert? Going to drop the, it pretty well, soon? The logo came out last episode, so, so you will notice a little change if uh, you get us on iTunes or even if you look at the video on YouTube, yeah. you see there's a new logo. New we're brand. Re- 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 rebranding, so it takes a little while to get all the things out there. So a, a big thank you to Dulce Leprechauns for hooking that up. Again, thank you all this week. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.